Well, hi, Mender. Hi. We were trying a whole new thing today. Yeah, we were just like talking for the last almost what forty minutes trying to figure this shit out. Mm-hmm. What time even is it? I don't know anymore. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Almost, almost an hour. Yeah. Almost an hour trying to figure out. Well, actually, about th- about thirty minutes. We started. We started about eight ten. So yeah, about thirty oh, minutes no. trying to. Any yawning? The fuck. Oh no. I'm, I'm that bored. Bad. That she yawned as soon as we started a conversation. You didn't yawn on the. I won't point. You didn't yawn the entire time we were. You know, doing this tech stuff. Oh my god. I know. It, it must be some weird brain thing. That's like, as soon as we hit record, yawn immediately. But anyway, hi, what you're listening to, it's Keep the Neurodivergent Convergence podcast. We are two neurodivergent best friends navigating the neuroverse together um, as two late diagnosed neurodivergent women. This is our experience with neurodivergent shit. That we talk to you about here every Thursday, and this is way off order, but it's fine. Uh, I, I don't know what happened to my intro, but I've lost it. Because uh, we are living in a neurotypical world, and we are not neurotypical girls. Welcome to the shit show. Um, my name is Nikki, and that's Amanda. Say hello, Amanda. Mm-hmm. Hello, Amanda. <laughs> Yay! She did the thing. It is she did the thing. I was listening to the episode the other day, and I was like... It made me think of the part from Shrek with the Shrek 3, I think it is, of the boy. Do the roar. <laughs> do the roar. Do the roar. Do the roar. That was Shrek 4. Do the roar. Shrek. Do the roar. That's right. Do the roar. Do the roar. Oh, God. Okay. If, if you're watching us, my background's a little bit different. I, I have my mom's today, so. Yeah, and mine's a little bit different because I have my overhead light off because fuck the lights right now. Everything hurts, including my head and my eyeballs. So I have my blue blockers on. And the lights off and a blaring fucking LED in my face. It's going to be fine. And I look like death warmed over today because that's about what I am. It's, it's, it's almost, it's about eight, you know, almost nine o'clock. And I'm I'm right before we record. So that's how I was looking today. I did manage to put on a shirt. You're welcome, everybody. Um, so I did put on a, a shirt instead of my giant ass, like pajama hoodie. So. You don't yeah. see that. I had I had just the you know the sports bra on, and then I was like, you know what, I'm cold. I'm gonna go get my sweater. So I got it is sweater. it is like in the teens right now. So yeah, we're back to freeze your asshole off weather here. Uh, it's supposed to be in the 50s or 60s next week. Yeah, and then you'll be we'll be back to freezing our assholes off. It'll rain, and then we'll wake up the next morning. It'll all be a fucking ice slick. Welcome to Illinois weather. If you don't like it, stick around for five minutes. It'll fucking change. Anyway, um. We've got some shit to talk about today, and apparently lots of yawns. Because this is yawn number two for future Nikki recording, or recording this, editing this for future Nikki. This is yawn number two. Um, I am burnt the fuck out officially. So we're going to talk about that today, but before we do, we have lots of fun and fuckery for you. If you stick around for the Chronicles of Jeremy, boy, let me fucking tell you, this is going to be a good one. We going to have us a giggle. So if you're sticking around for Jeremy at the end of this episode, you're going to be very blessed by Jeremy and his ridiculousness. So, Demanda, as my brother used to call you, I have forgotten yet again to light our candles. Talk to me about your life. How long has it been since we have spoken? Because you're good at this and I'm not. Uh, you say that and I completely blanked. When was the last time we recorded? Uh, I think we did it. It was not that long. Monday? Yeah. It was Monday. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking it was Monday because we were like, oh, we're really pushing the wire because we typically upload things on Thursday. Right. Um, so we did it Monday. Um, which today's Thursday, or not today's not today's Thursday, today's Saturday. Yes. So, <laughs> so, um, or at least try to be a little bit more in front of it than last time. But yeah, it was Monday, and then we were supposed to. I was thinking we were supposed to record Thursday, but then Nikki completely forgot me. Um, you know that was that was funny. It's okay because I we were supposed to record at eight, and I was like, hey, uh, so are we still going to record? 
It's so about 9.15. I'm like, well, I'm going to go change my work clothes now and change some pajamas. And then 9.30, she's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's okay. It was bad. Uh, I don't think I have ever forgotten to record with you. Um, but if it makes you feel any better, I have a funny story to tell you before we get into our fuckery. Uh, okay. You know you are burnt out when you're in the shower doing the same shower routine that you do every day with the same products that you use every day in the same spot as they always are. And you have just finished washing your hair with the shampoo. And the next step in routine is grab your conditioner bottle and put conditioner on hair. Instead of putting conditioner on hair, you put it on your armpit. I have totally done that. I've accidentally put bun wash in my hair. Yeah. Before. So, um, that's the level of fuck off life I am at right now. I have, I, um, put conditioner on my armpit instead of my head. So, um, yeah, if that tells you anything about what this episode is going to be like. Future Nikki, this is your number three. Um, yeah, that's your, that's your sneak preview of, of what this is about to be. But before we get into just how fucked the one singular brain cell I have left is, uh, and we hear maybe a little bit more from Amanda this time about burnout and how she experiences it, let's do a Mad Lib. Let's give the people what they really come here for. Not to hear us talk, but to hear the fun and the fuckery. Um... Let me uh, situate myself here. Um, let me flip this over. We are doing Professor Oak Pokemon Expert. Yes. Correct. At least I sure hope so because I already made up the words. Yes, I believe that that is correct, ma'am. Uh, let me me scoot the mic out of the way. Hold on. I'm sorry if you can hear all of this. Ugh. Okay. All right. Fucking hell. Okie dokie. Ma'am, I need from you a plural noun, please. Uh, badogadogs. Ooh, love. Badown. Uh, down. Got it. Yeah, I had to like erase it multiple times. I'm like, oh, oh like, let me use a word that just smell. You have to see if you sound out, you can spell it. But... That's right. That's right. Uh, a place, please. Area 51. Ooh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you're unmystical in here. Noun. Thumb. Thumb. <laughs> That's gonna be a good one. That's funny. <laughs> okay, plural noun, yet again. Uh, bitches. <laughs> I can't read ahead. Don't read ahead. Don't read ahead. Don't read ahead. Oh, that's great. You're, you're, you win the Mad Lib game. <laughs> like, every time, you're the fucking best. Okay, occupation, please. Uh, people pusher. People pusher? What the fuck is Yeah, there are people, it's, it's, I think it's, it's mostly in Japan, but they're, like, the people that stand outside of, like, subways and trains to get more people onto the train. Because, like, rush hour and stuff in Japan is absolutely full of people. Yeah, future near rush hour and work. So they have to push people into the train to get as many people on the train as possible. So there's a little job that people get paid for. Ridiculous, um, but fun. Mm-hmm. I want to push people and mm-hmm. get paid for it. And not, not and, and you know, and yeah, get paid for it and people can't be mad at you about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, how about a color, ma'am? Salmon. Sal- salmon. Salmon. Because the English language is fucking stupid. Uh, article of clothing. Hooker heels. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you fucking... You are Mad Lib Goat. Mad Lib Goat. <laughs> uh, plural noun, yet again. Well, loins. Loins. <laughs> <laughs> Verb, ending in ing. Gotta go with it. You know what it is. You already yep. know what it is. Yep. yep. 
Okay. Um, Jesus, another plural noun. I told you there's so many nouns. It's like, basically, you can tell which ones I phoned in. Because, like, I thought all of these up on Thursday, and I didn't do two of them. And you can t- kind of tell which ones I just made up right before we started recording. Uh, but the plural noun is mushrooms. Okay. Okay. Uh, adjective. Beefy. Beef. Beefy. Where's the beef? Another verb ending in ing. Throbbing. Blech. I don't like that word. Okay. Another occupation. Uh, preschool teacher. Oh, what, my God. Okay. A noun. Toilet. Toilet. And another noun. Globule. Globule. Got it. (laughs) Okay. Okie dokie, folks. Here we go. All right. (laughs) Get in here. All right. Ready? Here we go. Professor Oak, Pokemon expert. When you think of Atch Ketchum's closest badonkadonk, it's easy to list his traveling companions. But let's not forget about Professor Oak. Professor Oak, that was weird how I said that. Professor Oak lives in Area 51, where he, he, ha- wow, help. La, 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 let's try again. You're reading the AI story today, so uh, go a little bit off. This is going to be fun. Okay, let's try that sentence again. Professor Oak lives in Area 51, where he has his research lab. That's fitting. It is powered by a huge thumb that spins in the breeze. (laughs) (laughs) Professor Oak is one of Ash's first bitches in his quest to become the greatest Pokemon people pusher. Yeah, great time. Pokemon people pusher. Pokemon people pusher. Pokemon people leader. Pokemon. (laughs) He was a one-eyed woman or flying purple people leader. I can't. That is the fucking weirdest song ever. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. Let me just reread this sentence because it's going to make sense all together without me interrupting it. Ready? Professor Oak is one of Ash's first bitches in his quest to become the greatest Pokemon people pusher. Dressed in a standard salmon lab coat and hooker heels, he spends his days and loins researching and fucking Pokemon to help others reach their goals and mushrooms. <laughs> Whoa. You said that, oh, no, I don't want to imagine it. Just to have ogre heels and a peep coat with Pokemon. Charlotte's ruined today. It gets better. Even though he's often beefy, Professor Oak knows <laughs> almost everything there is to know about Pokemon and does a great job throbbing them for his friends. <laughs> Professor Oak may not be out there battling a trainer or a preschool teacher, but he has been Ash's biggest ally and toilet. Go, Professor Globule. Oh, I love it. We are cruising through this book, by the way. We are like two thirds of the way done. Good. We do not have that many left. So, excellent. We'll have to decide which one we're gonna do next. Like, I feel like we need to find another fun one like this, or like an like a, either like a nostalgic one or like an adult one. Yeah. Oh, like if they made like a Cards Against Humanity Mad Lib. Oh my god. Oh my god. That would be amazing. Okay, drink break. All right, so. Burnout. The end. <laughs> the end. The end. That's it. That's it. That's all. Just, just silence of <laughs> us staring into the void. That's what for us. Just staring into the void. Um. Yeah, pretty much. Like, that's, that's how I felt. I... I think this is the worst case of burnout I have ever had um, since 2020. It's really, really, really fucking bad. Um, To the point to where I am not able to, like, complete basic functions. But, like, before I get too far in to, like, my shit... I've talked a lot the last few episodes, so I want to give you an opportunity to, like, speak on what your thoughts are on burnout 
like how bad it gets for you maybe like what you do when you're noticing that you're in burnout do you have any tips are there things that help you or do you just have to like ride it out so I, I kind of want to hear from you like what is your experience with this how does it present for you that whole nine yards talked about burnout before like when I had my work conference um back in September and then the wedding in July so um had 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 talk about I've had talk oh my god I've had talked about burnout before on my case but basically what I do is it's partly like just writing it out like kind of just accepting okay I can't really do much without um without making it worse in a sense um I do it kind of just has it has it's almost like a chasing the dopamine like if I could find something that gives me enough dopamine to basically kind of wake myself out of it yeah like lately I've been feeling a lot of burnout not some from work because just this past week I've had to read a lot of contracts I am not a contract lawyer never want to be a contract lawyer especially after this week and so basically just doing a lot of stuff at work that I never had to do before and um so and I've been also working on like basically finishing organizing my house like I was pretty close to done after Mickey helped me with it and then but now I'm kind of like just kind of doing the last little bits that will to me make my life feel better so what I was doing is what I didn't have it in me to do like full-on organize your house in a few hours or take a few hours to organize my house stuff like that what I've been doing is like I will put something if I'm putting on like dinner or something like something that cooks in the oven for a good amount of time like even just 15 20 minutes i will spend that amount of time doing whatever organization i can do or cleaning up whatever in that amount of time so that's kind of like my thing is like even if you don't have it in you to do a day's worth of cleaning a day's worth of organizing day's worth of chores i try to make it like a game it's like okay well how much can i get done in the 15, 20 minutes it takes for my dinner to cook. Yeah. Or something like that. Uh, like, if it's a dinner that I don't need to be watching, be by the stove or something to be, to pay attention to. So, I was like, one thing I do, um, lately I've had been getting very little sleep. I even, when I messaged Nikki the other day, I said, yes, I'm aware it's late when I message you. Shut up. Nah. <laughs> don't judge me. Because, like, I, I, in 40 hours, I got three hours of sleep. Because I got two and a half hours one night and like 30 minutes the other night it's like you think like burnout would make you tired no I just get stuck in like scroll paralysis or just click the next video to watch and so it's kind of like my brain just shuts down and to the point where I can't think to like even though I'm like so tired like I can't think to not basically on focus on what I'm doing or it's like I kind of focus in a way where I can't stop what I'm doing but it's also like because it's so brainless watching you like if I'm watching YouTube and I hit the next video then I hit the next one and then I sweat oh my god it's only 4 a.m so that's how I can tell like burned out when nothing and really snappy out of it until I how to just let it happen yeah on it's all like in an astral way so it doesn't last forever it just depends like i i i, I got for hours last day you know whatever i had i had for all last week where my house will just become an absolute disaster like not dirty but where my living room couch was just being piled of stuff like that like boxes for amazon or um bags and stuff or stuff you know, so by like my went right on the case, so I was put it out on the couch. So there's just been days where or weeks where I just let everything go because I don't want to do anything else. Yeah. But like you like you, my my work hasn't been as busy. Like I still work the same forty hours every week because my jobs don't allow overtime. Um, you know, I'm like, well, you guys are want me to work all the time, and be like that time ahead of it, I would be like, I would, you know, if I got to do forty five hours, get five hours of overtime a week, I don't mind that. Um, so, but, like, when I get home, I really, like, lately I've been playing a lot of, like, World of Warcraft, so I kind of just get home, play that, kind of, like, zone out on that for a few hours, and just don't really do much 
this this past week. I don't really have it in me to do much else besides just kind of zone out on a on a dumb video game. But that's what it's been like for me lately. Um, like so, not as intense as what you've been going through, but still reading a lot of legal terms that some of them I had no idea, and also making fun of their contracts because some of these people you think they perforate their fucking contracts, they do not. So just a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, for for me, like this is sort of it's almost like a new a new level of burnout that I've experienced. Like usually if I could get a weekend off, I'm like good to go. Live. But um I'm just it's I mean it's so bad. Like I'm even having a hard time forming sentences doing this like I literally can't string enough words together to get thoughts out my brain feels just I don't I don't want to say empty because I it doesn't feel empty but it doesn't feel like it's off like it just turned off Mm -hmm. like there's just nobody the lights are on but nobody's fucking home and like it's like, the wheel is running, but there's no gerbil on it. Correct. And, like, the the things people say to me are not, like, my audio processing is not, I mean, it's always a little slow, but, like, it's really bad. Like, I've asked people to repeat themselves I don't know how many times because you'll say something to me and either I'm not processing it whatsoever, so I just didn't hear you at all, or... I heard you, and then not even a minute later, I've already forgotten what you said. Because I literally can't retain, I cannot retain anything I'm being told. I think that's why I forgot about recording. Because, like, I literally forgot that message as soon as you sent it. Like, that is how quickly I'm forget. I'm not kidding you. Like, I'm already forgetting shit, like, within 30 seconds of hearing it. And it's... It's sort of scary if you want the truth. I'm a little worried about it because I have never been this detached before. Like, I don't know if it really was just all of the stress of of, and just the all the pushing that I did for that one week or what is going on. But like, it might just be a, a perfect storm of a lot of things. But, and then, like, the the move didn't help. But, like, I'm, I put conditioner on my fucking armpits, man. Like, ha, what? Like, I. It's like your, like your shell. Like, your shell in person. Like, there's I, nothing, like, you're moving, but there's nothing going on. Right. Like, I literally just feel like I am absolutely, like, I just got done telling Ray that I don't have an autopilot function. Because she commented in the. They, she, they, it, she says she doesn't care. So I'm going to, I'm sorry, Ray. I'm just, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm sorry. Um, they said that they are on, like, they were watching a video about someone being on autopilot and how, like, brushing their teeth and getting out of bed at a certain time and, and making food and all these things are, like, on autopilot. And then, like, a neurodivergent person was commenting on it. And they're like, what function is that? And how do I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't like that. Because, like, like, we, like, we, we can't, we have our time forming. Right. Like, habits. Like, we, like, a re- like, not necessarily routine. It's more of what people would consider just a habit. It's like, oh, well, I habitually do this. Right. So, blah, blah. But it's like, but you are doing that. Like, that gives us a lot of dopamine. It's really difficult to form and stick to habits. Like, habits and tasks for, like, they're considered, or habits are considered, like, tasks. So, right. it's kind of like, or how have you said, like, you know, showering everything, that's not necessarily a task. Like, you like doing that, whatever. Like, for me, I consider it a task because I have to think about, okay, well, I have to let the water warm up. I have to make sure the bathroom's warm enough. And it's like, I have to make sure, because I turn on, especially during the winter, I turn on a space heater in my bathroom right. long enough. So it's like, I have to make sure I'm even long enough to do this. My hair is so fucking long. It takes so long to wash my hair. Right? So then I have to think about that. I have to think about, I'm going to be cold when I get out of the shower, even when I space heater. And then I have to think about all, blah, blah, all this stuff. So it's, I do the whole process. I do the mental gymnastics, don't get me wrong. Like, I do a lot of mental gymnastics about a shower, but, like, because it's just what I do. But I also know that, like, once I'm in the shower, 
the hard part for me is getting out of the shower because I don't want to get out of the warm, right? Like, so like I can get in the shower because I want the warm water, but then like the mental gymnastics comes when I'm like, just turn the water off, Nicole. Just turn it off. You got to do it now. Yeah, my get out of here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. My water heater doesn't have that much water in it, so my water heater it did like last maybe fifteen minutes. Is strong. She's a strong bitch, and uh, thank God for it because I run that shit at melt your skin off, uh, at, at gas mark melt your skin off, and um, I literally don't care how long I stand. Well, I, it gets hot. It gets hot, but I can only get yeah. hot water for maybe 15 minutes. And then... Yeah, no. We, we have um, yeah. 30 to 45 minutes worth of burn your fucking skin off your body water. So, um, I can't do that like I used to because my my mast cell stuff doesn't allow that for that, like, severe temperature change without massive consequences. I'll blow up like a fucking balloon. But, like, I I make it as hot as I possibly can tolerate um, without causing massive skin reactions and stand there for as long as I possibly can tolerate, uh, which, like I said, is getting shorter and shorter these days. But that's another thing. Like, I've noticed in these past, this past week especially, the fatigue is unlike anything I have ever experienced before. It's almost like I'm sick. And I don't think I am sick. Um... Maybe I am. I don't know. Because you told me you, you, you told me that you felt like you were starting to come down with something. Yeah, but like the more I think about it, it's like, am I really getting something, or is this just like the worst burnout I've ever experienced in my entire life? Like, my muscles and joints still hurt. Like, and it's not like a like a, I'm sick. I have the body flu kind of muscle aches. It's like I've moved too much, and I can't get recovered do you know what I mean like my wrists hurt my ankles hurt my like arm muscles here hurt my neck hurts my spine everything all of it just fucking aches like I've been working out six days a week for the last six months and it it feels like I have no like no physical energy whatsoever and it's the worst brain fog in the world I just I think that at this juncture all I'm really going to be good for is sitting on the fucking bed and staring into space like it's all I have it took every ounce of me to sit here and do this tonight like I'm I'm so fucking done like I'm just so done I I need I'm like desperate for some nothingness right like a couple of days of absolutely nothingness and I just can't like I can't and I don't know I don't know what to do about that like we're just not in a place where I can just take a bunch of time off for no reason and it's just not like it's not okay to do it right now like we're just not set up yet for that our team's not ready for that like our paycheck's not ready for that like it's just not I'm not in a spot where I could just like oh we'll just take some time off do you know what I mean I I can't like I I fucking can't and because this is the U.S. and you know places don't have to get a lot of highs is what it is right like and and we are trying to do we have certain financial goals this year like we we do. We have financial goals. I have things that I want to go do this year. Um, we would like to start putting money back for a vow renewal for next year. Like, I, I want to do a 10-year, like, wedding anniversary, like, vow renewal because my husband and I never had a wedding. We had a courthouse wedding that was plagued with problems, as you well know. So, like, <laughs> you helped save the day several times during that time. Like, to the point to where... I didn't even have a proper dress to wear. I was sick, sicker than a fucking dog, almost ringless, uh, almost dressless, and just all, it was just not a great day. Like, other than me marrying him, it was not a great day. It was just not, it was not a great day. So, like, we want a do-over, and that costs money, and, like, I, I'm taking every fucking hour I possibly can get because of that, but, like, fuck man like I might not actually make it to next year if I 
<laughs> it's a fucking time. But like, I think the only thing right now that's like getting me through this is knowing that at some point this is going to slow down. Like at some point it will figure itself out and even itself out. Like this is not a forever thing. And like, I know that very logically in my brain, but like I said, I am, I am not functional right now. Like I normally would be. I don't forget to record with you. It's like one of my favorite things to do in the entire world. So that's not a thing that I would forget. Do you know what I mean? And and I fucking forgot. Because mm-hmm. cause even burnout, because like most well, people understand, like, yes, I think everyone even like now terrible people experience burnout because you can get tired, you can get exhausted, but it's kind of like a next level thing where it's like you're so burned out and it's kind of in combination of with depression. Yeah. That you don't want to do even the things you like because it's like I will be playing a game and all of a sudden burnout happens and I can't even fathom the thought of playing like that game. Right. That I can't fathom the thought of doing anything else. Like I love to read. It's been a while since I re- like lately I've been trying to help myself like if because I usually go walking and I don't mind walking when it's like in the forties and stuff, but when it's, you know, five degrees outside yeah, no. and there's ice on the on the pool on the gr- on the floor. On the ground, I don't want to go walking. So I took a book from home and I will read, like, I have an hour to take lunch. I take 30 minutes because it's like I'm trying to get as much done as possible on this information thing because we're getting audited at the end of February. So I've been taking 30-minute lunches, um, which I normally do anyway, and then unless I'm walking or running errands. Mm-hmm. And so I will just read however much I can in that 30 minutes and then just sit there and just kind of, like, I'll close my office door, which I'll be able to do very soon. So I'm just kind of relishing that, be able to close my office door for as long as I have an office. And th- I have blinds on my office door, so I just turn the blind, you know, I'll close the blinds. Um, so try to get more back into reading again. And I even like download an app. I got this idea from Zach was to download this app to kind of track my reading, kind of make it more like a game. Like I feel like if I have like a checklist or a do list or something, it helps me easier to do things like yeah oh like i got back into play wow again because it's like oh i want to accomplish these things and wow but i gotta make a checklist and so if it, it's kind of like why like i like games that have like quests or missions or something it's like yeah i like seeing that checklist see all the check marks and all the things i completed so it's a very autistic brain part of me and the, the, like that i like to have I like the autistic brain part of me organizing it and the adhd part of me is like oh look at this side like, see yeah. that thing completed gives me dopamine yeah so yep it just comes together so yeah, I'm but, I, I'm 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 forgetting simple things that I don't forget and things that I like to do and putting conditioner on my armpits and like just stupid things <laughs> and I'm I am so detached. I'm so like an out of body experience. It really is an out of I was trying to lay in bed last night and just trying so desperately to reconnect to my body because I know I I know I'm so detached I was just doing anything I could and I was just laying there I laid flat on my back with my legs propped up a little bit with some pillows under my knees I put my heating pad on so that I had something to like sensory anchor me to the bed and I did some deep breathing and was like trying to feel every breath the air coming in the air going out I was trying to like squeeze my stomach muscles a little bit to like physically force myself to feel my body and like come back to my body and I just could not I could not even connect that is how bad this is like I I can't even breath work my way back to some sort of level of mental clarity it's just blocked I'm just blocked and it's scaring me a little bit like I'm, I'm a little nervous about it I'm really hoping that this is not, like, a precursor to, like, a whole fucking nervous breakdown or something because I don't think I've ever felt this detached before. So I'm, like, desperately trying to continue. I just felt that, like, Jordan has, you know, his work responsibilities, too, so it's kind of like he can't always be there. Like, he was there a lot helping when you were doing the store, but just sometimes when you can... So how does it like how does it work with parenting? Because I obviously don't have that experience. So how does that work? Like you, it's it's kind of like you're you know not forced, but it's kind of like you 
and your brain knows it's okay i have to because i can't just like ignore my kids i can't just do this but i think like in a way it's helpful but also in a way it's hurtful because it's helpful in which that i'm not i can't fall into a deep enough depression because my or like a deep enough inability because I have an instinctual drive to care for my children that I just have like not every person experiences that way some people who are parents maybe can't push through that or don't have that deep instinctual thing or they're too far gone to tap into that so it's no like I'm not making a blanket statement here but just me personally I have an instinctual drive to care for my children. And so even when I don't want to get up and do things for them, I know that I have to. So I just try my best to do those things in the easiest way possible. Like today, breakfast and lunch was delegated to Duncan and McDonald's. Like, that's what I needed today. They needed to eat. I needed to feed them. So... Dunkin Donuts and McDonald's did it like I am I put them in the car and we took a fucking drive and that's what we did so they ate their lunch in the car they ate their breakfast in the car and we did what we had to do what is this six I think it's six yeah so um and like tonight I said what do you guys want for dinner you know I was I had to feed the dog I had to feed the kids and so I was like okay I know yesterday thank god for past me helping future me out Noah wanted chicken nuggets last night for dinner and so I put some chicken nuggets in the air fryer and I was like just make enough for tomorrow that way you have them because he's inevitably going to want them again so just cook some extra so his dinner consisted of telling him to get a paper plate and heat up his nuggets And Nick's dinner was, what was Nick's dinner? Mac and cheese in the microwave. So, like, I buy the, like, the Bob Evans style macaroni and cheese things, but the Aldi ones, because they taste the same. So, I buy the Aldi ones, and I always have a couple of those in the fridge for times like this where I don't, I can't, I can't fucking cook. Like, I just don't have it, but they need to eat. So, you know. They know how to use the microwave. So I'm like, dude, mac and cheese, right? Like, that's what we're going to do. So I have to sort of set myself up for success in that way by having quick and easy things that sometimes they can prepare themselves for lunches and dinners and things like that. Because for me, the earlier in the morning is usually, no matter how burnt out I am, usually I'm a lot better in the morning. Once you, Once I hit like 2 33 o'clock it's all downhill from there like I I am just slowly deteriorating after 3 p.m so I know that if I can if it's bad and it's really bad and I can sort of set up the night during the day I will do that um and so I I did that today I did a lot of cleaning this morning because uh my sister was supposed to come see me tomorrow um, but the baby's been sick, so she decided to push it back to next weekend, which I was like, that's totally fine. I get it. Um, so we're going to see her next weekend now, but, um, she was coming and I knew my bathroom needed cleaned. I knew the house was just fucking disgusting and luck for whatever reason, I had enough energy to follow the dopamine around the house and do as much as I could, which was way more than I It's also it done. It's also the thing we talked about of doing something because someone else is dependent on it. Like, yeah. oh, my sister's coming, so now I got to house look presentable. Whereas if your sister wasn't coming, yeah, I probably wouldn't have done to any of this. So, like, thankfully she told me she wasn't coming after I had already done a lot of cleaning. <laughs> so, like, which, like, that's that's true, though. You, you got to have, have someone tell you that they're coming so right. that way it tricks you into doing it. Right. Well, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, like, she's probably not coming because I knew the baby was not feeling well, and then she started not feeling well. But just in case, right? Like, I don't want to be caught tomorrow 
with a dirty bathroom and dog hair everywhere and, you know, stuff laying around when I have guests coming over. So I want to make sure all this stuff is clean and ready if they do show up. Right. So I just did it. And then that gave me enough dopamine to keep going and a little further, a little further. And then right around probably right around three o'clock, I was like, okay, I'm done. Like I started feeling my muscles aching again. My wrists started hurting. I was getting a headache. I was getting tired. So I finished up what I was doing, seven. And uh, then the boys wanted to build. I, I bought, I showed you the Lego set that I got for Christmas, right? With the, the Disney villains set with like the book yeah. and the apple. So the boys have been begging me to let them help me build that, which basically means let me build it, right? Like, let Nicholas build it, really, because that's what he wanted to do. So I was like, okay, that's fine. You know, like, I'll go in there and we'll, we can build it together. Well, build it together quickly turned into my autistic oldest child saying, just fuck off, let me do it, basically. Like, he just took over the project and I was like, oh, well, that's like, that's, that's fine. That's funny. That's, that's funny because yesterday I was at my dad's. I went to my dad's after work and I got him a... Um, a uh, model kit of the Millennium Falcon mm -hmm. and the the Starship Enterprise, Star Trek Enter uh, Enterprise, um, USS Enterprise, and I got him those. And then so I I when I saw them on his table and that his kitchen tables where he builds those, I said, "Oh, have you started either of them?" I got the Millennium Falcon one for us to like build together, but I didn't know if he started the other one yet. And so he goes, "No, but let's start doing it." It basically turned into me doing it and him like just popping out the pieces as well those ones that are like cardboard and you pop out the different pieces to like just kind of like slot them together and then like it got to the point like an hour later I'm like here now you follow the next steps because i've just been doing this whole thing so <laughs> i didn't need to take it over but so yeah basically within like, a couple hours and got me and just did that so i was like that's fine buddy you you do your thing bobby's tired eight eight yeah eight eight <laughs> And <laughs> creepy face. That's going on the fucking nothing. Else. <laughs> yeah, that. Um. So, yeah. And then what else did I do today? Uh, uh, not much else. And, Walk and see, I'm, I'm the opposite. Like I'm the opposite of um, where yeah, I get that like two or three. I don't know why what what it is with two or three, but two or three is like I get so just all of a sudden tired but then like i get a second wind around nine ten o'clock so if i'm not i'm not asleep by nine ten o'clock i will be awake till like three o'clock and they because i'm just such a night person so same actually so that's why i think i have my body is just so at this point like i don't have a choice to be up that late because when i'm up that late i literally don't function so like i I think my body has just figured out that, like, if you don't make her pass the fuck out now at this time, like, because around 10, 10 to 1030 is when I am physically can't hold my eyeballs open anymore. So, like, 1030 at the latest is when I will be going to sleep. If I hit 11 p.m., I'm done. Like, I'm done. I'm up. That's like, why, and that's why it surprised me when I saw you playing, like, on, on the PlayStation when I saw you at, like, midnight. I'm like, how is she still awake? How is this woman, the woman, the grandma, how is she still awake? Yes, I, because I hit 11 p.m. and I was fucked. And, uh, that's, that's all she wrote. Sorry if you heard that. That was my, my husband's messages and calls make noise on my phone even when it's on silent. So, like, an emergency thing. So, um, and he's at drill right now so anyway um yeah so i just i i think my body ha and brain has just somehow built a function in where it's like put her to sleep now fucking now or she's never gonna go to bed so um yeah i just sort of give in around that time even if i'm not particularly very tired because i know that if I lay there for 30 minutes, I will eventually pass out. So, um, nine? Yeah, nine. Yep. Nine. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, hi, God, we're probably going to hit 10 on this one. That's a, that's a big one. That's the biggest one we've ever done mm -hmm. so far. Um, fitting for the burnout episode. But yeah, um, I don't, I don't know. 
short answer is I don't know what to do about this one because it is not the right time to take time off from work. Um, it is not the right time to, well, I mean, there's never a right time for me to completely disconnect from everything and everybody and everyone, even if it was only for 24 to 48 hours, because I have children that depend on me to keep them alive. So I can't do that. Um, and a husband who sometimes wants attention so I I can't really just detach from life and I mean I will say there are like little easter eggs like I, I guess when when the short term things are like not it's like not in the cards for a short term fix I sort of start to think about like something to look forward to um tell we did it we did tell good we made it and um so uh I start thinking on for like the future things like this year is probably going to be a heavy travel year for me because um I have glam camp coming up in April um so that's really not that far away it feels like it is but it's really not um this this year this it's uh January 20th today yeah. um it feels like it should be January 4th like yeah. this year has gone by so quickly yeah um I'm... and we you have an extra day this year we have a, it's leap year sorry so yeah it's it's gonna be interesting um but yeah i have glam camp in april i have andrew's graduation in may um then i'm going to my dad's in june probably like the last week around the last week of june um because jordan will be in i think at at during that time sometime in june i don't know when uh, so I've been going to my dad's and then, so I just start thinking about like, okay, I don't have that much longer to go until I get this kind of break or like even shorter terms as like this weekend. I knew that I was going to have this weekend off. Right. So I was like, I just have to make it 11 fuck to Friday at three o'clock. And then Friday at three o'clock, I can slow down at least might not be able to stop, but I can slow down. I don't have to put any makeup on. I don't even have to get in the shower if I don't fucking want to. Like, my children are old enough at this point where they don't need me to dress them. I don't need to change diapers. They don't need to be supervised 24-7. They can, for the most part, feed themselves. They do have to be reminded to do so because they're also neurodivergent. But, like, I'm essentially just there to make sure they don't hurt themselves or anyone else or burn the house down. Or burn the house down. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I'm essentially just at, like, I'm an adult in the home because legally I have to be an adult in the home and they need some guidance still, right? But they're, like, self-sufficient little things otherwise. They entertain themselves for the most part. And because I was a kid who wasn't, like, listened to very much and had a mom who was very detached at times, which... I mean, I understand now why she was, but, like, I I try, even when I'm like this, I try very hard to, like, Noah wants to come tell me something about Minecraft or a toy he made with his blocks or something. I try very hard to just kind of stop what I'm doing for a minute and just listen to him, even if it's something, even if I'm not, like, actively listening to him, I'm at least paying attention to him, and then I'll give him a compliment about something, or you're you're so creative, buddy, I love that, that's amazing, like... I'll at least I pay him attention so that he feels like I'm listening to him, even if I'm doing that from my bed. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm still trying to be participative, if that's even a word, and and engaged as a parent, even if I have to do that from my bed. So, like, I have to do things differently when I'm like this. And I don't, like, just keep going, like, just keep swimming the Dory thing, like, it's not, it, it's not gonna work for everybody, right? Like, it's, it's just not. I can't, when I'm this bad, I, I, my body is physically and brain is physically stopping me. Like, it's physically telling me no more. Like, you literally can't do anything else. And I think the biggest red flag for that for me was when, like, I forgot to record with you. 
like I know that I've been forgetting a lot of things the last week, but like when I forgot to record, like I'm like, okay, I'm done. Like this is real. This is real shit. Real talk. The real real. What is it? No cap. <laughs> no lie. No cap. <laughs> uh burnout. No cap. Um Yeah. But it, yeah, I don't even know. That's, that's that's all. That's all I have to say about. I don't it. even know if anything I've said is even going to be intelligible at this point. Like that's that is how bad this is. I I don't physically have well, words to describe. <laughs> like just how you know, it's kind of like. So when in my in my in my um my part of it, what I had to do when I first started doing this vendor management stuff. And before I'd read all these contracts, we ha- I had my f- my first meeting with the our VP of IT, and so we, that's we I basically got to meet with each VP, um, to go through their vendors, see which ones they still use, see what like ra- risk rate them, stuff like that, and basically they tell me what function they perform for us, um, and so when the first time like when I met with the VP of IT. He would, like, tell me what they do, like, what the vendor does. Like, oh, we, they file and process and file and send out our members' tax forms or they do security testing. Like, he would tell me and I'm like, I would, and I'd be typing out what they do because I just need, like, three or four words, maybe a sentence of what these people do. And I'd be like, what? How do you, how would I phrase that? Because he would say it, but I'm like, okay, I need to phrase this in, like, layman's terms. Like, you wouldn't use, like, overly hard terms like I right. terms and what they do but I'm like yeah but I'm like and then like he would literally tell me which would be like a very simple phrase of what they do like they do this this and this and I would start typing and I go what did you just say like what and it would be like I couldn't process yeah what he was telling me of what this what they I'm like and how would you phrase that like I think one of them was um Oh, they do like data encryption. Like he said, oh, they do data encryption um, for our emails. Pretty simple. Just they do data encryption for emails. And I'm starting to type it out, and I go, I don't, I, I don't know what you just said. Can you repeat that? And like I could, like it, it just means like left my brain. Yeah. He's like, they do data encryption for emails. I'm like, okay, thank you. Yeah. And then there's a couple times I'd ask him multiple times. Yeah. So it's like I just felt. So out of it, so I'm meeting him. Like I said, meeting him with him again on Monday, and I'm trying to finish up everything. And I told my other boss that I sent a daily email to. I'm like, I'm not gonna get, but I'm not gonna get this to you. My regular email, which I usually do first thing in the morning and get it to her. It usually takes about me about an hour to get that completed. I was like, I'm not gonna do that until probably after my meeting at ten because I'm gonna come. I'm gonna try my best to come in at like seven thirty, um, on Monday, to finish as much as I can like basically make sure everything is good for my follow-up meeting with him and that way at 10 o'clock so I have two and a half hours to get that done which is mostly done but it's more like I want to make it because I made a spreadsheet which my boss jokes she goes Amanda you and your spreadsheets I'm like I know <laughs> I know I make a, I make a damn good spreadsheet okay yeah but I want I wanted to make it to where I'm like okay this looks this, this looks overwhelming to anyone else to me it makes sense but like this all, all this color coding I have going on, all this sorting I have going on, it's not going to make sense. I'm trying to, like, simplify it enough to where I don't want a crazy person. <laughs> um, so where I so don't like, look like I'm autistic. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like I have, like, 45, we have, like, 45 vendors to go through. So I'm trying to, like, okay, these vendors, I have the contract on file. It's not signed. So I have a group of vendors that I need the signed contract, the signed version of the contract, not just, like, the version they sent us to sign. Yeah. And that we don't have a the sign version or I need purchase orders for these vendors. Like it says we're not contracted with them, which means we tend like we bought printers from them. We don't need a contract to buy printers, but I do want a sales receipt of some kind. Right. To show this or whatever whatever else may be. So it's just kinda like I I wanna group them, but it's like my I keep getting distracted. Like I had someone come into my office Thursday and talk with me for like an hour and I'm thinking I was so on a roll like I was so such a roll with doing all this work and they came in which I I enjoyed when they came in and talked to me like we talked about different things and whatever and I, and I consider her a friend but um 
but then it's like I had like an hour left of the day and I couldn't get back to doing anything because it's like I lost that I just lost that momentum to where I couldn't I basically did absolutely nothing the last hour of the day because <laughs> it's like I couldn't just go back to where I was at that point so yeah I it, it's real it's yeah like it's so bad <laughs> it's so bad and I honestly don't think I have other words at this point and I think if we don't mm -hmm. we don't cut to Jeremy I'm just gonna be repeating myself at this point so I mean unless you have more things to say I I don't like I just I don't mm -hmm. it's where we're at and, and I'm sorry guys like I really wish I had more in me but like this is real shit like this is real shit real burnout and if you've been it in it, I'm sorry, but you get it. Like, I know you get it. If you get it, you get it. If you know, you know. Okay, if you know, you know. And it's bad. Like, I truly feel like I could sleep for a solid 48 hours and still not be recovered from this. That's how bad. Like, I'm. you can see my eyeballs aren't even all the way open. Like, they're really not. And that's been me all day since I woke up. It's not just right now. Like, I've literally looked like this all day. I had to go into work to get something. I left my water my uh, water bottle there. So I had to go pick it up today when I went to go get Duncan for the kids. And I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. And it looked like someone had punched me in both my fucking eyes. Like, my dark circles and shit were so bad. I don't even know if you can see them right now. You can't, kind of, but... This light, wow, it's dark you know, girl. So I always have like, yeah. I mean, it looks they were all the way down here, and they were like a brown. They were so brown, and usually they're not that brown. They're like a bluish, right? Like a little bit, a little bit bluish. But they were just orangey brown, like I had been jacked in both of my fucking eyeballs, and it got like an old bruise is what it looked like under my eyes, and I probably should have just put my patches on and kept them on all day because this need they need sucked back into my fucking skull just suck up Ooh, lost my earbud hold on tossed my earbud um but yeah i looked like death warmed over it was awful and i still do and this is your treat i have hair you're welcome that's stuck straight the fuck like straight the fuck up this is what growing out a side shave looks like folks it looks like flock of seagulls on the side of your head mm -hmm. um yeah so and it needs cut again because it's grown out again so yeah it's just a mess like i am absolutely detached and dysfunctional and losing my fucking marbles so and and sorry everyone like i keep moving like i usually am moving a lot on camera because i can't sit still but it's also like i'm sitting in a folding chair which is not very comfortable right so, well i'm just in an office chair so i'm like my office chair is pretty comfortable but like this one i'm just like ow yeah so i vote we blow we put everybody and ourselves mm -hmm. out of our misery at this point <laughs> and end it here um if you're sticking around for Jeremy, we're going to hit the transition in just a second. But if you are leaving us now, thank you, as always, for sticking around. We appreciate you. Uh, we have noticed an uptick in listens in the last two weeks. Um, so, therefore, I do think so. We're canceled. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we're canceled. You don't, you don't, you don't worry there for a minute, but I, was. I mean. I was. I was a little worried. Because uh, we did lose a couple followers on Spotify, I noticed. Um, but the listens have gone through the roof. So, I mean, I'm I, I'm not worried about it at this point. Because um, when you look at our little graph, right? Like, our all-time graph looks like this. So, it starts, like, up here. And then it goes, whoop. And then we have a couple little peaky, peaky, peakies. And, it goes, and I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> so... We're getting somewhere. Y'all are y'all are listening, and we thank you for it. Um, we can't, obviously, have a show without listeners, so we appreciate you. Um, if you want to become more than a listener, and you want to participate in 
a group setting, get to know us a little better. You can come join our Discord. It is very free. Uh, we talk about anything and everything over there. Talk more about the show, things we talk about here. You can introduce us. Uh, if you listen to our Spoon Theory episode, let us know what your spoon drawer looks like. Because I think that's really interesting. Um, you can also do those things on our Facebook page. And you can come flip through our Instagram. Um, have a little look-see over there. Also, we have a tweeter that we don't tweet on. No, nope. uh, but all- I've, I haven't even looked at it. Like, I'd ask Nikki so far, one by one. Okay, what's the login for this? What's the login for this? And then she'll... Uh, so I have yet to do the one for the Twitter because I don't care about... Yeah. I'm never calling it X. I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, well, I'm not sorry. I'm never calling it X because I don't, I don't care about Elon Musk. I'm, not, I'm never calling I'm it X. It's the dumbest sorry, name ever. Twitter. It's the dumbest name ever. Like, Cause I literally it's was on it. Very just, dumb name. I, I literally... What's well, because it's... Well, look at the name of his children. So I, but I literally... I literally was on um, Twitter the other day just to look for a certain tweet by somebody and... I don't, I don't sign into Twitter or anything, but like the where the X was, the X logo, I thought it was the X to close the window. And so I kept clicking on it. Now, why is this closing? And it's like, oh, this is the fucking icon <laughs> for the company. For that such an idiot. Boomer extreme behavior right there. Well, when you, look, when you create a company that is one letter and it's the letter that you use to close a window, then no. That's his own damn fault. Not my hand that your boomer is showing. <laughs> I figured it out. Let us realize it's all just to the logo, but you know it's just weird. Like we've called it Twitter since its inception. You can't just that's like changing face. Yeah, there's the meta. It did. There's even a joke about Alana. There's even a joke about Alana, which was cringy as saw. But right. there was a joke on the Alana about he's like that's that's called twittering or something like that. I was all yeah. tweeting. He said like he wrote a he used a bird to make a message at all or something. He goes that no, that is called tweeting. It is not called xing. Okay, like. A, a, a tweet is on X. All right. It's stupid. Yeah. It's, it's stupid. like when Facebook tried to call itself meta and it didn't work out. So, like, you yeah, know, and everyone's like, we basically the internet is like, no, 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 we're not, we're not doing that. Like, how the internet, how the internet bullied the Sonic producers to be meta. They're like, and collect with, if they, while well, they bring the internet together, is to make, it makes Sonic great again. It's but, like, no, you will not do this to Sonic. God. Fuck with our nostalgia, and you will see us band together uh, from yeah, every side of the banner. spectrum. Under the one banner, we will invite at dawn yes. to bully the, the Sonic producers. That's right. <laughs> Don't make him look like a fat sap, okay? Fix him. Fix him now. Mm-hmm. He shall not look like that. Make him right. He was already done right. <laughs> Don't fuck him up. You can't change how a character looks like that. It's just not okay. Give us Twitter back. We're not us. Call it Twitter again. And we, and and we've reached the battling about nothing at part of the episode. So you're welcome. So you're welcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, time to go. Well, they tighten the old all the all the, mid, the the good old Midwest goodbye. Yeah, the good old Midwest goodbye is is upon us. Thanks for listening. We love you. All the all the by the way, everything we just talked about. Uh, all of our handles are the same. Just at the NDC podcast. All of them. On everything. Everywhere. Socials are platformed. You can find us there. Okay, goodbye. goodbye. Let's hit Jeremy. Okay. Hi. So we're back. We're back. Welcome. Back in black. And you stay around. Thank you. Yeah. If you stuck around, uh, we're here. And I'm you want, you want you want the fuckery. We we had the fun with the mad lid. Now you have the fuckery. Right, right, right. So, as we discussed last week, uh, sympathy apparated from the ceiling of a cave, broke her fucking neck. And the AI tried to kill her off. Yeah, the in the alternate universe, the alternate yeah. dimension that was deleted, the timeline was erased. Yeah, Sorry. Brett Connie. Okay. Uh, you're and gonna on this whole last episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
We're going to fix it. It's going to take two episodes to fix it, but we're going to fix it, okay? Um, okay. This AI story gets real, real interesting. <laughs> real fucking fast. It starts out very serious and ends very strange. <laughs> so we're going to just roll with it. I had to give it a lot of help. Um, So here we go. Uh, maybe if I can clear my throat. Fucking hell. All right. The prompt is this. Sympathy. Sympathy, can you hear me? Sympathy, wake up, please. Binky the hearty pleaded. He turned to Jeremy with, his, with tears in his eyes. Will she ever wake up? I don't know, Jeremy, the psychic cat said. That fall was serious, and she landed right on her head. There's no telling how long she could be out. All we can do is keep talking to her and keep her comfortable. Some psychic you are, Binky snapped at Jeremy. Hey, that's not fair, Jeremy snapped back. How the hell was I supposed to know she was going to apparate from the ceiling and land on her head? Could you two shut the hell up? I have a headache, Sympathy the Unicorn said. After nearly a week in a coma, she was awake. Sympathy, speaking, caught Finnegan the fainting goat so off guard that he fainted right next to Sympathy's bed, but Binky and Jeremy were too excited to care. That was the prompt. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Sympathy the Unicorn opened her eyes. Finally, she exclaimed. How long have I been out? She asked. I don't know, Jeremy the Cat said. Jeremy, Jeremy the Cat. Jeremy the Psychic Cat said. You just sort of appeared, I guess. Oh, she said. I'm hungry. What are you two still doing here? Jeremy cleared his throat. Come on, everybody. Get up and get something to eat. It's about time you eat. Okay, Binky the Hardy said, and ran outside to the tent to join the others in the feast that was going on in the village. What's this all about? Sympathy asked. Sympathy, we're trying to help you. Please trust us, Jeremy said. If you don't tell me what the hell's going on, I will be on my way. Jeremy looked away and seemed hesitant to tell Sympathy what happened. Jeremy! Fine, but you can't leave, Jeremy said. There's been a great danger going on. I know that. How the hell did I end up here? The last thing I remember is standing at the basement door and then... Jeremy interrupted. We're going to figure out what's going on. What, like we're psychic? This is supposed to say sympathy said, and then doesn't, but yeah. What, like we're psychic, sympathy said? Well, no, but we've worked together for too long to lie to one another. You'll see soon enough, Jeremy assured sympathy. For now, you need to eat something and rest. Just know you're safe. Sympathy groaned. Whatever. When the dinner was over, sympathy retired to her tent to rest and recover from her concussion. This is so freaking lame, Binky the Hardy said. It's always the same. The ratty couch and random blankets and a campfire. And this is the best campfire ever, Jeremy the Psychic Cat added. I am dying, Sympathy groaned. Oh, it's all good, Jeremy said, patting Sympathy on the back. Don't worry, you'll have better campfires. <laughs> There's always tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. Ugh, you're so lame. How am I supposed to sleep with you two dorks talking to me all night, Sympathy said. Fine then, Jeremy said. I'm gonna get me some lovin'. <laughs> This is where it takes a fucking turn. Just ready. I want me some lovin' too, Binky said. Fine then, Jeremy said. Let's go get ourselves some lovin'. Yeah. They left their tent and started to walk towards the center of the village. So, uh, are we just going to go grab some lovin' and be done with it? Binky asked. Sorry, it's really hard to read it. Uh, yeah, Jeremy said. And off they went. When they arrived in the center of the village, it was quiet. Too quiet. Good thing you left your damn spell up, Binky said. Yeah, something's not right here, Jeremy replied. They should be all over this place, Binky complained. Hey, do you have any idea how bad I need some lovin'? Fine, let's go take a look at the source of the danger, Jeremy's downright randy. Yeah. And gestured, gestured for Binky to follow him. But don't go anywhere, and don't look at anything that isn't already in your eyes, Jeremy said. <laughs> oh, of course, Binky said, and the two cats went deeper into the village. They didn't find much trouble, except a few rats chasing each other through the streets. Uh, sorry, no rats, Jeremy said, and I don't feel any big danger in here. Yeah, because there is a monster of love in the center of the village, Binky said. <laughs> nah, Jeremy said, it's just some stupid kidnapping stunt. Well, I'm still going to fight for my love. I'm out of here, Binky said. 
Don't worry, I'll get us some gourmet chocolate ice cream and we can watch movies and cuddle, Jeremy said. Sounds good to me, Pinky said. I just want some lovin'. <laughs> I hear that, Jeremy said, and patted Pinky on the head. Then the two headed back to their tent and went to sleep, only to be woken up in the middle of the night. By sympathy, the cynic princess of evil. To be continued. <laughs> yes, so now she's a unicorn and a cynic princess of evil? Yes, we leave it at the cynic, the cynic princess of evil. Because, spoiler alert, that fall and that thing Jeremy didn't want to tell her has something to do with the cynic princess of evil here. Hmm. You just stay tuned for next week. Just stay tuned. Because we're about to see same shit go down. Same same bat time, same bat channel. Yes. Yes. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Yeah. Um. So next Thursday, come back. Mm -hmm. And if you stuck around this long, type your first name followed by Cynic Princess of Evil mm -hmm. on the Facebook post for the episode for the week. Oh, it is. Uh, tell the people what my animals are so I can choose. Ah, shit. I forgot. Uh, you were a kangaroo in the AI story. And you were a camel in the ideas document. What would you like to be? Well, I gotta pick the kangaroo because they can kick people. Camels can just spit on people. Kangaroos <laughs> can, like, kick people and punch people, like... Like, a kangaroo could take out a boxer, so... Very true. I'll go kangaroo. And also cute. Yeah. Cute and deadly. Yes, yes. So, uh, Amanda is a kangaroo. Yeah. The end. That's, that's all I have to say about that's that. That's it. I, it's gone. It's done. It's over. I, I can't. The, the brain. The cells. They're, they're falling out of my ears and my eyeballs and every hole I have. Um, it's just the leaking... It hurts. Make it stop. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. No more. <laughs> I can't do the thing they do. I can't move my neck like that. And we can't play the song because copyright. Because copyright strike. YouTube shall strike it us down. We have it. We barely got off the ground, and we're already struck down. I know. I mean, damn. We're just. By the way, this is episode fucking forty. Fucking <laughs> forty. Four zero. We're only ten episodes away from that meme review. We keep saying we're gonna do that. We have yet to do. Remember when I was like, "Baby, well, yeah, we have to do it because." 50. Yeah, we have yet to do it because we haven't reached that point yet. Right. But I was like, episode 50 is a really long way away. But we're only 10 weeks away from that at this point. That's strange to me. Yeah, anyway. Hopefully y'all did anyway. more memes in the meme shelf. Not just Ray. We need more. Yeah, I know. Like, Ray is floating this whole meme game over here. Floating and goating. She's the captain of this ship. Right. Floating and goating this ship with the memes. She's the only sole proprietor of the meme shelf. Needs some assistance, okay? That they just do. We could. Not that the memes aren't good, because they totally are. But uh the more the merrier, as they say. They're they're a one a one a one man meme army. Yes. They're a one legged person in a meme kicking contest. Instead of a one legged person in an ass kicking contest. Yeah. That was a bad joke. Okay. She's now we now we delve down to the delve down to the nonsense. Yeah. Now now it's real bad. <laughs> this is the this is the golden. It's time for your it's it's bedtime. It's time for your it's it's what, time for bed. What even oh god, it's fucking after ten o'clock. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, I gotta go. Yep. Well <laughs> Well <laughs>
That's a real knee slapper right there. Go, yo, sir. Midwest, goodbye here. I love you. Goodbye. Love you, bye. Okay. I don't know how to stop this fucking thing. Hit stop recording. Jane, stop this crazy thing. Oh, <laughs>